Uh -huh. Recording. Okay, today we, I will talk about uh, the next uh, topic that will be important for you to understand or to connect to the next level of your programming. That is uh, C data structure, right? That would be important for you for the next semester that you have to study in the course programming with data structure. So today class, I will start from the introduction and then I will uh, recall you back again for the self-referential structure. Do you remember self-referential structure? It is a structure that you link to the, to your data structure, right? Link it back, okay? Or uh, simply speaking, I would say that it is the data structure that contain the data structure inside. Mm -hmm. And the next important thing that you might have to know that is the dynamic memory allocation that you have to use malloc. Right, that is this this uh, function is very important in C programming, and I will introduce you uh, four data structures that would be very useful for you in the near future. Right, that is a link list stack, queues, and trees. Okay, that's the things that I would like to. This is the topic that I would like to talk today. Okay, first of all, I have to start from the introduction about the data structure. Why do we need to use the data structure? Maybe you have already studied about the, the array and data structure. What does it mean by array? Array is a collection of the same data type, but data structure is a, a collection of different data types, right? And collect it in terms of the fields, and then we can make use of the data structure in order to group um, the related fields or related elements into um, the same data structure. For example, if you would like to declare a, a student data structure, you may have to collect the name, um, family name. Of course, you have to show the ID of the student. And also you may have to print out the, right, the faculty, the department, or even for the GPA of that student. That would be the data structure. But um, uh, in practical, data structure will grow and shrink, can be grow and can be shrink during the execution. So um, if you want to keep or uh, to store the data structure in, in the form of the collection or in the form of array, it might not, it might be inefficient. So uh, in this chapter, or in this module, I would like to introduce you the dynamic data structure or the dynamic data structure, right? That is a linked list or stacks or queue and binary tree. That would be very important, not just in terms of the, the easy to use, but also you can have the efficient data structure in order to store your data. I will start from the first one that is easier. That is a linked list. What does it mean by linked list? Linked list can, um, it means that um, consider, considering array, right? Considering array, okay, I will write an array here. If you have array like this, right? If you want to put the data in, in array, right? You have to start from the current position, right? This one will be the, if you have, okay, 15 will be, the input number that you need to store in this array, you can put it and then you have to move the index here to the next one. Once you want to uh, keep another number, right? You have to put it in the, let's say six, right? you have to put in this index and so on. Right? This is the nature of the array. But, in some cases, you might want to put the, okay, you want to, okay, to put the number two here or even to this place or even to this place like randomly, right? It cannot be, okay, it's possible for the, maybe for the array, but if you want to put a new, new, new number here, right? In between 15 and six, and six, you have to move every number so in this case, like it's very simple that there is only six here and then you can move six to here and then press 20 
in between uh, 15 and 6. Um, so you have to move 6 back. But what if we have 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 here? And if I would like to insert 21 here, what would be happened? So we have to allocate more array here and move this right to the right hand to the right hand side and then insert 21. That is not um, efficient and it's not practical. Not practical. This is array, right? And this one is not practical. So in order to solve this problem, right, we, we need the new data structure we call link list. What does it mean by link list? Link list will do um, like this. We, it can, it allow insertion and removal anywhere in the data structure. Okay, I'm going to tell, uh, I'm going to show you um, the, the nature of the link list in the next slide. Okay, this is uh, what we call, this is a link list, right? Link list will start from the, how can I say the head? Right? We can have the head, which has the, the data structure that is the same as 15 and 10 here, right? And 15 and here, we can see it. We, we can call it as a link list, right? What does it mean by link list? Link list will have the head that point to um, the element or the data structure. And inside the data structure, we have two, at least two, uh, two elements. The first one will be the data or the value, right? And the second one is we call link. Link will link to the next, the next data structure of the same kind, of the same kind, right? So we can have two parts, right? The data member and the pointer. Normally we can call this as a pointer but sometimes I will call it link because I will call this data structure as a link list. So in this way, you can have the link of the data starting from 15 to 10, right? And if 10 is the last number or it is the, the rear or the, the rear of this link list. So in the part of the next link list, you have to keep this value now. Now pointer means it will point to nothing, right? Point to nothing. So it will say that this is the end of this link list. Okay. Um, I skip to the to explain about the link list um figure or the image, right? So uh, before I will okay, I have to quickly call you back again about the ref, uh, the self-referential data structures, right? What does it mean by this? It is the structure that contains a pointer to a structure of the same type or of the same kind. Okay, for this example, right? This one is a self-referential structure because, because you have the data structure here and inside this, it will be the data structure as well to link to the same data structure of the same type, a structure of the same type. Okay, I can show you in a different way about um, the, the practical presentation of what I'm talking about. But I want to, to, to give you the description about the self-referential structure again. It can be linked together to form useful data structures such as links, link lists, queue, stacks, and key. That will be cover all for, for data structure that I'm going to talk about today. Okay, and the terminate. The termination of this self-referential data structure will be the null pointer, right? You can just simply define it as null, N-U-L-L, or capitalized character. And, okay, this is um, a, an example of the link list, okay? And, um, okay, we'll step further. Okay, this would be uh, maybe um, this is an example of C program so in order to express about the self-referential classes, right? Suppose uh, 
Okay, in this example, you want to define a new data structure we call node, structure node, right? So in C programming, you can write it as struct node. And then there are only two elements. The first one is data, right? You have the type of the data as an integer, and then you want to point to another node, to point to another node. So you have to define the self-referential classes inside this data structure. So we can put subtract node right, of the same type as this one, right? But you cannot put the, ele the element inside. What kinds of data type that you put in the self-referential classes? Anyone can tell me? What is it? What is this called? What is this called? Okay, suppose this is a node. Okay, this is a data structure, right? Containing two elements. The first one is the data. The second one is can be the node again. But we cannot put node inside the node. Okay, this one is not, is not okay. So the things that you have to put here is the address of node. What does it mean by address of node? It is a pointer. It is a pointer. This is why we call pointer as a self-referential class or self-referential structure. So in this case, you please don't forget to put the star sign here in order to show that this you want to keep the address of structure node, address to the structure node. So what does it mean by, uh, sometimes we have to name it as a next pointer. What does it mean by next pointer? Next pointer will point to an object of the same type, of the type node. And it is ref referred to as a link, as a link. Sometimes I will write it or name it as a link link to the next data structure, right? So in this case, you can time or you can bond one node to another node. For this example, structure node can be represented like this, but right? this is a simple structure node by containing data and the next pointer. So normally we have to define the head will be the first link to the, the, the first data or the first level cell referential class, right? So if you keep 15 here and then, okay, for the next step, you have to put what? Oh, sorry. Okay, okay, again, this is head. And then this is the first, right? When, when you write a program, you, okay, you input 15 as the first element of this linked list, and then you have to put now to this one, right? To this element, because we want to link or we want to say that this is a terminate, termination of this data structure. But if you want to insert more elements, first of all, you have to allocate memory. Okay, if the next element will be six, okay, and then you have to allocate, no, to assign the, the, the pointer or the link to now, right? But for 15, right, if you want to link 15 to 6, you have to assign this to the address. Okay, suppose address here is AB00. So you can just simply assign this one to AB00. What does it mean by this? So fifth, the, the second element of 15 will be the address of the next data structure. The next data structure is this one. And at this is supposed, okay, AB00, right? I normally use AB00 in order to reference the primary, uh, the, the, the main memory in the, the, the memory in the primary address, okay? So uh, when I uh, assign this one to an address, so it means that it, this one will point or link to the element six. This is the way that um, link this does, right? If you want to add more, if you want to link six to eight again, so you have to 
declare this as now and then you remove this delete this and then okay if this one is a b c low uh, the address will be a c low a right so you put a b c low a here and then this means that this six element six will link to a so in this way you can represent the link list very easy right easy okay this is what we call link list okay maybe we i a bit step further to the next slide but no problem up to now do you have any question about self-referential classes Okay, if you don't have any questions, so I will go to the next slide. That is a dynamic memory allocation. I've just said this word, right? Dynamic memory allocation. So I have to start why do we need the memory allocation? What does it mean by, okay, I have to start from what? Uh, what is uh, dynamic memory allocation? This is the way to obtain and release the memory during execution. Suppose you are trying to run your program, right? And then you need more memory, right? So you need to request for the memory allocation. And why we call it dynamic? Because um, it's not fixed, right? Normally, if you use array, array is a static memory allocation. If you use array, right? Array is static. Why static? Because you need to uh, define or declare it in your program before you start uh, program execution. But for the dynamic memory allocation, you don't have to, to, to say it in advance that you need this memory, right? When you run to a piece of code or the part of your program, right? And you want new memory allocation, so you can just use this function, malloc. M A double L O C malloc stands for memory allocation. What does it mean by memory allocation or malloc? It will take number of bytes to allocate in the physical memory, and then you may have to use size of. Do you remember size of function? Size of function will determine the size of an object, right? Maybe primarily. Um, the primitive data type or even for the data structure. If you don't know exactly about the size of the data structure, you can just simply use function size of in order to indicate the size of your object or the size of your record. But it will return the pointer of the type Y star, right? Y star will be the general data type of pointer. Have I told you about this one, Y? Y is a general but a void pointer may be assigned to any pointer. It's general, it's generic pointer. It can be, it can point to any kinds of the pointer, right? Sata, sata, sata integer, sata double, right? It could be void sata, right? When you use memory allocation or malloc, like if no memory available now in, in your physical memory, it will return now. So that's mean that you cannot allocate any more memory. And the next slide will be the example of how to use or how to write the program for malloc. But you may have to declare new pointer as a pointer. Okay, maybe you can define why new pointer like this, but it's a kind of the pointer and then you malloc. Size of structure node. Okay, so because it is size of structure node, so maybe you have to define this new pointer. Subtract, subtract node. New pointer. Okay, 
So if I if I give you this, if I give you this uh statement, and I ask you to declare or to declare new pointer. So you have to write start node star and new pointer and semicolon, right? Before you use this structure, right? Because why? Because new pointer is a pointer to this structure node, okay? And the most important thing that you have to keep in your mind that once you allocate memory by yourself, right? That is a user defined memory allocation. So you need, you please don't forget to free it after using. After using. So uh, once you want to, um, to exit your program, right? Or you want, if you go to the program termination, you have to free memory. Otherwise, it will be keep in your main memory after your program execution. And that would be, uh, sometimes I call it zombie or the, the part that we cannot access for a while, okay? So it could be this, yes, I, I saw it, the some, zombie memory. What, what does it mean by zombie memory? Zombie memory means it was allocated by a program, but another program cannot reallocate in this memory, even this memory is free already or is not used, right? So um, if you want to um, write the correct and very efficient program, you have to free your memory. What does it mean by free memory? Free function will deallocate memories that are located by malloc and take a pointer as an assignment, as an argument, right? So you can use this one, free new pointer. Okay, so once you allocate, okay, once you like this, this sentence or this statement, you have to put this one, free new pointer as well, somewhere in your program. So in order to make sure that you will not forget to free memory before the program execution, before the program termination, sorry. Okay, this is um, how to make use of the dynamic memory allocation. Okay, now we have known about the, the, the how to make use of the dynamic memory allocation. You can use malloc, right? And the next slide that I would like to introduce you that is a link list. Okay, once again, link list is a linear collection of self referential class objects, or we can call node. Okay, please remember that when we want to uh, refer to the link list, um, an element of the link list, we can call it node. Or even for the tree or stack or the, the queue, right? We can also uh, refer to it as a node. It will connect, it will be connected by pointer links, uh, I have already told you. And it can be accessed via pointer to the first node of the list. Okay, you may need to uh, define the head or the first node of the list. Okay, for this example, you can see that, okay, we have to start doing this from the node head. This is a node head. Actually, for head, well, we don't have the, the exact node here, but it will be the dummy node head, right? And head will be also reference to the, the, the stuck node. Head like this, right? It is also the reference, self-referential class or self-referential structure, right? This is the example of the single ring list, right? Starting from five, seven, three, four, and then four will point to now to show that it, this is a n, n node, okay? Come back to, to the previous slide. Subsequent node are accessed via or by the link pointer member of the current node. Okay, we have known that this node, right? Node five will link to seven and node seven will link to, to three. This is the way that link this does. Okay, and link pointer to the last node will be set to now. 
they have already talked many times, right? If you want to, um, if you want to identify the last node, right? The last node, you have the pointer to now to show that this is the, the end of the link list or the link list termination. We can use a link list instead of array when you have an unpredictable number of data elements. If you don't know in advance about the number of the elements that you are going to deal with, so you can use link list in order to uh, represent the dynamic number of the data element. But if you know exactly the number of maybe the student in this room, right, that is 77, so you can define the, the array of integer or in the, the array of the array with 77 elements. But what if I want to, um, to use this program for the next, the next batch of the students and there are 80 students, so I cannot use it like this program, so I have to rewrite or recompile this program. But if you use link list, your program will be flexible. And the last one is your list needs to be sorted quickly. Sorted quickly, okay? So you, um, in, the next, in the next semester, I'm going to talk, to talk about the, 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 the sort algorithm, sorting algorithm, right? And sometimes sorting algorithm can be represented in terms of the link list in order to, to make the use of the sorting method to be quickly, right? We can use link list. Now, we want to know how many classes or how many types of the, of link list. There are one, two, three, four, right? Maybe four, main types of the link list, right? The first one is simply link list. What does it mean by simply link list? The first, the first, this one is an example of the simple link list. If you begin with a pointer to the first node, okay? Begin with the first node and terminate with a now pointer. Okay, now pointer. And then only traverse in one direction. Okay, this is important. Simply the building list will have only one direction, right? That is in opposite to the circular, uh, in, in opposite to the double link list. Double link list, we will have, okay, two start pointers, first element and last element. If you can see this one, right? We have two, two side, I mean two link in one node, right? This one is in a node, right? This one we can call node. And, there are two link lists here. So in order to indicate the first or uh, the next one and the previous node, the, the next node and the previous node. In this example, the next node of five will be seven and the previous node of seven will be five. So in order to indicate that right, we should have two, uh, two link lists, right? So, in this way, we we'll call that bleeding list. Each node has a forward pointer and backward pointer and allow traversal both forward and backward. Do you know the word traversal? Traversal means visit, visit forward and visit backward. So this is the, the nature of the double link list. Okay. And we also have a circular single link list this one is a special case of the single link list because the pointer in the last node point back to the first node. The last node, if the last node point back to the first node, to the first node, we can call it circular single link list. Okay, and in the same way, right? If you have the double link list and you need to, and if, if it the circular double link list forward pointer of the last node will point to the first node and backward and backward pointer of the first node will point to the last node forward pointer of the last node forward pointer of the last node here like you point to the first node you point to the first node and the backward pointer of the first node will point to the last node. 
Okay, this will be the circular doubly link list. Okay. In the classroom, we have 45 students. Do you have any question about link list? Okay, if you don't have any question, I will post the further to the program, right? Um, actually, I don't want to, I really mean to want to uh, teach you how to write program for the data structure because it, I will ask you to do this in the next semester. But if you want to know what does it mean by data structure, or if you want to know exactly the, how to run the program for the link list. Okay, you can copy this to your uh, compiler and then you can run it. But in this way, I just want to show you that, um, okay, this is the way to, to declare the self-referential elements, right? If you have the list node, right? The list node contain data. And if you want to make it to be a link list, you have to define structure and list node. And Sata next pointer. Star next pointer will be the address of the next pointer. Okay, and inside the for the link list, where right, you will have many functions related to the link list. For example, if you want to use the link list right, somewhere, you need function in. In, in search. If you want to delete the list, the, the node from the link list, you can just delete. If you want to check for gender, this link list is empty, you can just empty. What happened to my. Sorry, I don't know what's happened to my presentation. I have to stop and I have to. Just screen and then, okay. Okay, come back to this screen, right? This is an example of your off link this program, right? Okay, there are insert, delete, is empty, and print list as a function of the ring list program, right? And then, this is a program that to check for the function insert, right? If you if you press one, right, it will insert a node into this thing list. If you press two, maybe you have to delete this node, right? And default will be invalid choice. And this, this one will be the list of the function of insert, how to insert, right? In insert, right? You may have to, you don't have to know the number of elements in that one. So you have to allocate new memory or dynamic memory allocation anytime you want to insert the new node, right? So that's why you use the malloc. In this way, you use malloc, right? Type of this node, right? If neon fighter is not now, it means that there is a space available. So new pointer will point to the value and the next pointer will point to now. And then you need to know the, the place that you are going to link it. Use, yeah, you use current pointer, right? Pointer point to the S pointer, okay? Okay, this is a function in order to insert a list to the, okay. 
if you don't understand this one, okay, don't be um, scared because I'm going to talk about this later in the next next year, next semester, okay? And this one, I want to show you how to deal with the link list and, this, and show you the program of the link list, insert, delete, right? And check for empty and print the list. Okay, that's all. So this is um, the example of this program to write it, um, to, to show the program execution. If you enter one and then you want to enter B into the list, so now B is in the list and then you insert, okay, you use, I, uh, you use, you use select choice one, right? And insert A to the list. So now A will point to B, right? And then if you want to insert C, right? Right, and then it will be the link list. This is a special link list because if you put A, B, C, it will sort automatically. Right, and if you use, if you select try two and you want to delete D, there is no D in this list, so it will show you D not found. And if you press two again, and then you want to delete B, B will be deleted from the list and the list will show A and point to C only. So this is the way that this program does. So if you want to, to try to use this program, you can just simply copy it and then you compile it and then run it. So you can see the program execution in this way. So this is what um, I want to talk about, about the link list today. Okay, this is a link list. And the next data structure that is uh, also important in the data structure course is the stack. But what does it mean by stack? We have to start from what? What? What is stack? Stack is uh, um, the mechanism of stack will be like this new node can be added, can be added and removed only at the top. So, okay, it's, so that's why it's similar to the power of dish. When you uh, wash a dish and then you place the dish on another dish, right? This call we call the stack. And the me mechanism that we use a stack will be the last in first out. The last one that we put into the stack, right? It will be first, the first plate to be out. Okay, so let's see this figure. It will be easier for you to understand about the mechanism of the stack. First of all, you may have to empty the stack, right? Because there is no dish or no plate or no stack in this stack. Once you push, we need, okay. Push is a function or a method that we will use with the stack. Push means push to get the new one, right? So now we have one in this stack. So one will be here. And the next one is we push two into the stack. You will get two. And the next one, you put three into the stack. You will get one, two, three, like this. But once you, want, you, you use function pop here, you don't need to pop something, right? The pop function will, will obtain or will get the first, okay, the element that is on the top of the stack. Top of stack. To pop the element up at the top of the stack, right? So in this way, we will pop three. If we use pop function again, two will be, number two will be obtained, that, right? So, so this is why we call it line four, right, line four the last in first out, bottom of stack indicated by link member to now. 
okay and it is contented version of link list is that um maybe you can use link list in order to implement their stack okay once again push you add new node to the top of stack and pop you remove the node from the top store the pop value right the pop the pop check value will be will be got will be obtained then. and it will return true if pop was successful right suppose we have an empty stack right and then you try to pop it will return false because there is nothing inside the stack but if there is at least one element in the stack right, when you pop it will return true and then the value of the top of the stack will be obtained okay this is the nature of the stack last in first out it will be impossible or uh, it will be opposite to the, 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 the queue. Queue will be first in, first out. But stack is last in, first out. Like four. Okay. So this is a stack. Right. And if you want to uh, implement a stack, you can follow this piece of code. Right. I have already shown you here. Right. In order to represent the stack. Okay. And the next one, we go through it very quickly. So when we have step, we have to talk about Q as well. Right. Q is similar to a supermarket checkout line, right? Like when you placed into the queue, right? And the nature of the queue is five, five, four, first in, first out. This is very, uh, you are familiar with this nature or this manner. And the nodes are removed only from the head, right? As you place into the queue, the first one in the queue will be removed first. So the nodes are removed only from the head. And nodes are inserted at, only at the tail. So when you put new member to queue, it will, will be put at the tail, right? So you need to important function, insert and remove operation. Insert, you insert the new node at the end of the queue. And if you want to remove the node, that's we call DQ. You have to get the first element from the front. Okay, so sometimes in queue, right, you can use, instead of using insert, you can use NQ. Instead of using remove, you can use DQ. Okay, so we can use this uh, interchangeably. Okay, when you want to insert, insert from the tail, right? Use NQ. If you want to delete or DQ, if you want to remove, you have to remove from the first element of the queue. So this is a uh, FIFO manner. Okay, remember this is Q is five four. Q is five four. And that is like four. Okay, these are the program to implement Q. Okay. Once again, right, when someone um just uh come into this class, right? I'm going to link from C programming in this term and the next term, which is the programming with data structure that you are going to, to, to study about the data structure like this. Okay, so I show some, uh, I, want, I want you to know what and why do we have to use this data, this for data structures. So that's why I'm not, I'm not going to detail about the program here. And I leave this to the next semester. Okay, we have NQ and DQ. Okay, okay, let's go through this example. If you press one, right, to insert new character A, right, A, A will be in the queue, right? And the next one is if you want to insert B into the queue, right? So now B will be next to A, right? And then enter C, right? C will be put following by B, right? And if you want to DQ, right? A has been DQ automatically. The first 
okay because a is the first element of this queue so a is needed to be the queue first so bc is left in the queue and then if you dequeue again so uh, b will be removed b has been dequeued and then if you choose two again c will be dequeued okay and if you still want to dequeue right if there is no nothing in your queue so it will show you queue is empty okay queue is empty okay if you even you put you you make a choice four right it will show you in your choice is this what um this program does okay this is the queue okay here we come to the last topic of today that is the trees tree is very useful in data structure you can use tree in many applications and um tree is another representation of the link list and tree normally we have two links or more right so three nodes contain two or more links right our other data structure we have discussed only contain one except the double link list but for three right, you can have more than one or two or more links right the most popular trees is a binary tree. Binary by means two, right? So that's, uh, it means that all nodes contain just only two links, okay? For this example, this is the, okay. None, one, or both of this may be now, right? The root node, normally when you want to identify the first Note of the link uh, of, of the tree, but you have to, to say it as the root. The root node is the first node in a tree, but you have to start from root, right? And each link in the root node refer to a child node, right? By the way, we have two arms, right? This, right? And a node with no children, we can call this node, right? For this example, this node, this node and this node has no leaf node, has no shielded, but we call this as a parent node. This one is a shy node, shy node, right? This is a parent node. So if um, the shy node has no leaf node, so we can, or uh, has no shielded, so we can call a leaf node. Okay, this is three. Right. And the next, the next slide will show you about the diagram of the binary tree, right? So what, what is this node called? Root node. So in this way, B is the root node, right? B is root. What will be the child or the children of B? A and D, right? A and D. Uh, the children of B, A and D are children of B. And what are the leaf node? In this example, A and C are leaf node because they have no children. Okay, A and B have no children, right? And this one represent now, okay, now. Now. This one is also now, okay. So you can see that if uh, both two links of the node is set to now, 
so we can call it as a div node. Okay. Now, now, div node. Now, now. Okay. There is no shy node. And the next term that you might have to know that is a binary search tree, right? A binary search tree is very useful to keep the data in the in the order, in the ascending order. Why? Because um the left subtree, normally when you have this one is the root, right? And when you want to refer to this part, right? This part will be left subtree of 47. And this one will be the right subtree, right subtree of the root 47 as well. Okay, so this one we want to separate into two subtrees, left and right subtrees, right? The value, our values in the left subtree will be less than the parent, which is the 47. Okay, this is the spatial, spatial attributes or the spatial feature of the binary subtrees. The left subtree will be less than, every values in the left subtree will be less than parents. On the contrary, the values in the right subtree will be greater than the parent as well. <clears throat> so this one will be facilitate duplicate elimin elimination. <clears throat> okay, so we call this the binary search tree. We will use this in order to uh, sort the, the list of numbers, right? You can use the binary search tree in order to uh, to sort the tree, right? And if you want to search an element in this subtree, it will need, okay, for the link list, right? If you need, link list will connect the list like this, right? Suppose you have seven, eight, nine, ten. If you want to search for 10, right? You need to visit or travel along this, this way, along this, you have to travel, travel. Right, three towers or this one is linked list tower. So you have to traverse until the end of the linked list. So if you have an element, you need to search for n times or n comparison. But in this way, in binary search tree, if you want to search an element in this search tree, it you need only log n base two, log n base two comparison. Why? The reason why is that suppose we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have twelve. For this one, we just need only twelve base two comparison. Twelve base two will be about four, right? Because two raised to the power three is eight. Two raised to the power four is sixteen, right? In this one is three point something, right? So need you need to compare only three or more or three plus one. Okay. So if you want to find if you want to find 60, 68, you need to compare this one 40, 47, right? It it means like the a game, right? If you know you have to delete it half Right. Okay, 68 is greater than 47, so go to right. Because you know that if the, the number is greater than the root, right, you will go to right sub three. Right sub three greater than. Okay, and then compare 68 to 77. 68 is less than 77, so we go to left sub three. And then 68. 68 is less than, six, uh, greater than 65, right? Less than 65 is less than 68, so you can go to right up three. And then now you go to 68. 68 is equal to 68, so, okay, hello. I can search for you, 68, so that's all. One, two, three, four, right? We have four comparison, maximum. Maximum of, Log n base two comparison. This is the efficient. This is the effect effectiveness of using the binary search tree 
or even for the binary tree, right? Um, the number of comparison will be reduced to log n base two, right? Compared to the traversal for the link list that you need to traverse in comparison, that is very big. So think about if you have 1000 elements in your uh, data structure, right? If you put it into the link list, you want to search it, right? And the elements that one you want to search is at the end of the link list, what's happened? So you have to search for 100, uh, one, sorry, 1000 times. But for the binary search tree or binary tree, right? You can just simply use maybe 10 or 11 comparison, right? Because log, log 1000 base two is equal to, okay, two less to the power 10 is 1024, right? So it will be 10. So the maximum you need is 11 comparison. So that is faster and it's more efficient, right? So even, for the binary search tree is um, maybe a bit difficult to implement, but I think this one is very important and very, um, very useful for the implementation in the data structure. Okay, this is a, an example of tree, where we have binary tree. And we also have a tree traversal, right? Um, okay, I'm not going into detail, but I want to show you here and I will teach you later about the in-order tables. So I'm not sure whether you have already studied about the, the three tables so in this case, my class. Have you studied three tables so in this case, my class? Silent. We have only, only 48 students in this Zoom and everyone is sleeping. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm not going in. Okay, I want to show you that um, how can we use the traversal. There are three traversal in order, pre-order and post-order traversal or tree traversal. And in order, the meaning of in means we have to put node in between of the ref and I will go left node, right? Or sometimes we call left root, right? Root is inside. Okay, for pre-order, root will be started first, root left and right. This is a pre-order. Pre mean root is the first one. And post order post means as it name, right? Post will be the, eight, the the last one. So I will start from left, right, and root. There are three kinds of the three traversal, right? And three traversal will come up with the the the, the order of the elements in the tree. Okay, maybe I will go to the previous slide. Previous slide. If I used pre uh, if I used in order in order, right? So I write it again, it's some um, left root and right. So what will be happen to this one, to this tree? Okay, this one is root, right? But we also have the left, right? So we we'll go to left first, root will be stopped. And then to 25, right? 25 will be the root of this sub tree, right? And we have left, right? So you have to go to left first. And then 11 is a left and also have the left, right? So you can go to the left until you go to the left most and then you can have seven. Seven will be left, okay, seven. Root, root, root is 11. And then 17 is right. And then this left sub T has already Printed, right? So, oh, now it's left and right. We still have the left of it. So you go to until we have the left mode that is 
31. So we have now here we have the here we go to the 31. So we we get 31 left. Okay, I change the color. Left, root, and right. Okay, so 31, 43, and 44. Right. So you can see that the list of the elements or the number in this list, in this printed list will be ascending order in ascending order from minimum to maximum. So that's why I'm, you can come up with the ascending order. And then here we have 44 and then this one, we have already finished the left hand side or the left of T, then we go to the root, root will be 74. And then we, here we have, we don't have left, right? So this is root and right. So we will be left sub three, and then we we'll go to the root, which is 77, 77, and then go to the right sub three, that is 89. So the in order T tower, so you can come up with the ascending order elements, okay? Sorry, I must disappear, right? From where? Where did I disappear? Anyone can hear me? Yes. Okay, where 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 did I disappear? Mm -hmm. Since I finished talking about the three tower cell, right? Yes. In order, in order tower cell, right? I finished that. Yes. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I don't know why. What happened to my maybe network? And then um, so I think I have finished about the lecture today about the tree, and then um, okay, this is um, uh. So the next part that I'm going to talk that is uh, the, the, the program about the binary tree and tree traversal. In this program, right, it will implement the three nodes, right? So you can see that uh, for the three nodes, we have two links, left pointer and right pointer, and we have the data in between, right? And in this program, we have to uh, insert the node function, insert node function and we have three kinds of the three traversal in order, pre-order and post-order. I'm not sure whether I have already talked about the, 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 the meaning or the, the advantage of using the in order, but when you use in order, you will get the, the new list of ascending order of the elements in the tree, right? If you have the binary tree, right? And you 
want to sort it, you can use in order in order to show the ascending order of the elements in the tree. So that's all of the, okay, the preliminary idea of the data structure and this one you, we will talk about this in the next term. Okay, so I just want to preview about the things that you need to know in the next term. And it is also important if you want to maybe to use the dynamic memory allocation, you can use malloc. And malloc always and very important in the data structure because for the data structure, even for kinds of the data structure, starting from the linked list, stack, queue, or trees. And maybe we have to know about heap as well. Right, you need to perform the dynamic memory allocation. So in this chapter, I would like to show you how to use, how to make use of the dynamic memory allocation that I have already talked about this in the, in the beginning part of today's class that this uh, dynamic allocation. Okay, so that might be all of the lecture today. And um, do you have any question? You can ask me. If you have no question in the afternoon, I will ask you to, uh, to do the lab about ATM machine, automatic teller machine. I hope that you all know about the automatic ATM, right? ATM machine. I don't know why when we call ATM right, automatic teller machine and we have to follow it by machine again. So it's mean that automatic teller machine machine, right? ATM machine. Okay, so you need to write a program in order to deposit, withdraw or check your balance. But, but today you have to write a program in group, group of three. Do you want me to, um, to arrange the group for you or you will select your friends or your teammates by yourself? Select ourselves, okay, okay, please. Okay, today you have to select your friends, right? For three person, right? Group of three. And then um, we have to, uh, we have the lab session starting from 1.30 again. So because we have to um, group to, 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 to group into group of three, right? So we need to, um, to combine the, 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 the room or the session together, right? So we will meet each other. Please tell your friend too, right? Who are absent to come to the lab at 1.30. And please select your group first. Maybe someone can uh, help me to, to write a Google form or Google sheet, right? In order to uh, for you, for some students who cannot get their group, right? So it would be easier if you group and place it into somewhere that maybe Google Sheet, right? It would be um, a good solution for this, right? And then you can, and, and can, I can also know the list of the people in group of three, okay? Please do it in, in, the, in our like group and then um i have no more i have no more no more lecture for today do you have any question if you don't have any question i will stop the the lecture today now so you can have some free time before you go to the next class called Calculus. Okay, and see you in the afternoon, 1.30. Thank you very much for joining us here in this lecture. I don't understand the initialization of the structure pointer. You, I don't understand the initialization. 
Um, if you want to initialize the structure pointer, you need to initialize it by using now, n u w l. Now will be zero. Now will be the define. If you define now in, I'm not sure in the standard I O or standard library, but it will point to zero, and it will mean it means the zero pointer will will be the the the, the zero pointer or the zero address in the main memory. To point to nothing, actually, mm -hmm. and thank you for for this uh, question. This is a good question because whenever you uh, allocate memory for the pointer, you need to initialize it to be now. This is important. Otherwise, you will get the garbage, and the gar garbage will cause your program. Um, abnormal, abnormal execution. Mm -hmm. There are more than one thread. What does it mean by one thread? Uh, um, I mean we are help. Uh, for two section, yes. Uh, can... Okay, we have we have seventy seven students in this in this big group, right? So you can manage the group from the seventy seven students because I I I integrate all all the groups, so you don't have to select from the same group. Okay, you can select any three of you. Mm -hmm. And golf, no problem if you don't understand the code, right? I'm going to teach you again next term, right? I just want to show you the, the, the code here. But if you really want to know about the code, so we will talk about this and discuss about this later, okay? Um, I think the data structure will not cover in the, the final exam. <laughs> I've already told you that I want to connect from this course to the next the next course in the next semester. So I, I show you this one, the data structure that is beyond beyond this term. So the um <laughs> I'll be on the floor. Okay. Mm, that's a good meal, right? Or do you want to, to have the final exam, including the keys? But in the class, this statement, you may have to know about in order, post order, and pre order. You have to understand about this. This is my special gift for you all, right? That I teach you about in order, pre order, post order first before Ajahn Alimon will teach you. Mm -hmm. But once again, I have no meeting with you all, right? So maybe we have to manage the time that we can have the Zoom session that we can talk to each other about the problems or about the difficulties in, in, teach, in teaching and learning in this department, okay? And if you have any free time, right? Uh, please, appoint, please give me the appointment and then we will have the the free time that we just talk about anything other than the, the lecture or the, the, the course. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much and see you in uh at noon. Oh uh, no, not at noon. At 1 30. Okay. Bye bye. I would like to um end up this Zoom session and see you in the afternoon. Bye bye.